scroll in their ear and let the deck spit I just might catch a case on my next hit Remove they whole face on some special effect shit So show respect trick or I'ma have a flashback Digging through the dresser like fuck it where my mask at Then mash back with the banger and damage shit And say fuck right. everything Now for as long as you've been down have you ever heard of uh, a guard uh, uh, giving a convict a one-on-one -on -one fight, a head-up fight? Yeah, that used to be the norm when, when when we first came. When I first, you know, came came to prison, but not no more. Right. So where were that some of these? Happen. Where were some of these fights take place at? Well, you know, it was one dude in Calipac, a black dude. He'd go in the cell with you and get out. Mm -hmm. You disrespect him. You know, I have seen that a couple of times. That was basically like the, really the only prison that I've seen it at. Right. But Calipat was a different prison than, uh -huh. than a lot of these other prisons that I've been in. Right. It was a different time, a different, it was a different place. It was ran by a, a lot of people that was under politics, that was, you know, in the prison games. They was running the yards. And it was basically like structured. So it was it was different. Right. Okay. So and, so by you saying it was structured and, and it was different, that's to me that's an indication of that. Things have definitely um, been watered down there, so there's not a lot of structure nowadays. Is basically what you're saying? No, ain't no structure no more. Period. Ain't no. You got people. You got Mexicans sleep in a cell to one o'clock in the afternoon. So are you, you saying got woods that sleep to one o'clock, twelve o'clock? You got niggas that sleep all day. So then you saying? Don't nobody give no books out, no more. None of that. Ain't no studying time. None of that. So then not only is it not structured among the blacks, you're saying that the Hispanics and a lot of the white inmates aren't as structured as they used to be as well? Nope. It, it got, got toned down. And it all got toned down when we did the hunger strike when we was in the shoe. Mm -hmm. And they let all the people that was validated, all the OG Mexicans and the, 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 the OG uh, uh, Aryan brothers and all them out. They made a deal back there with the BGF and all that that they was going to turn down the violence and CDC. Right. Okay. So everything after that got watered down. So now we don't we don't want to say it because I'll, I'll, I'll uh, definitely have to uh, edit it out. But at the prison that you're at right now, what um what factions are up there? Are there uh, Southerners, Northerners, uh, Bloods, Crips? What, uh, who, who Who's up there uh, at the prison that you are currently at now? Prison I'm at right now, it's only Southerns, Woods, uh, Bloods, and Crips. Okay. And how's how's the? I mean, you know, you got the you got the Bay Area, so you got them there. So I'm just gonna say the Blacks, the Mexicans, and 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 the Whites. No, no Northern Mexicans, no Bulldogs. And how's the racial politics up there? Uh, I mean, they watered down. I mean, the SA do they thing, the Woods do they thing, and basically the niggas is basically follow behind what's, whatever they think is right. So, in your opinion, you know, because I always ask this to the to the uh, people that I'm interviewing, um, what what um, group of convicts run the prison? I would say the Southern Mexicans got a strong, you know. They got a strong hand in the prison. And basically, Woods are going to, you know, follow under them because they basically like allies. And the niggas is going to be like, well, I'm going to say the blacks. I ain't going to say niggas. I'm going to say the blacks. I mean, it's, nowadays, you know, they got the, the cell phones and all types of stuff. So everybody looking for an excuse not to do nothing. Right. So basically, they control the prison, mm -hmm. if, if I want to say so. Right. In my eyes. So in your eyes, the Hispanics control the prison. Yeah. Do I mean do they do they dictate what other races do or I mean elaborate elaborate on that? How do they how do they control point, it? You know, the reason why I say that to a point, right? Because the blacks ain't really gonna do nothing unless they do something. Right. It's like if if I come to ten blacks and tell the blacks, hey man, this is wrong, this is what we should do, them same ten would be like, nah, man, we ain't gonna do that. But now if a group of essays come be like, Hey man, my, me and my people is about to do this. Them same blacks gonna be like, oh yeah, we 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 gonna do that too. Right. So that's the reason why I say that you know the SA has got it. You know they basically run it because niggas follow behind them. Right. And it's sad. So do you do you do you fear that the blacks are, are scared of Hispanics? Uh, I'm I'm gonna say when it comes to playing with weapons, yeah. Uh huh. You got you got a whole bunch that's gonna be scared to play with weapons with them. 
Right. And, you know, I don't fault nobody because, you know, it, and it falls on, you know, the older homies. It falls on, you know, people that have been in here years but not teaching the young. You know, you don't got people teaching people how to make knives no more. You don't got people teaching how to do certain things anymore. So people be having bullshit knives. I a motherfucker with a toothbrush. Gave me a toothbrush the other day, and I looked at it, I threw the shit back under the door. Like, man, this is crazy. Right, right. So, I mean, and that's what I blame. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But right. far as prison politics and prison, how it used to be, it's no more. Okay. So earlier you had mentioned... um that you had got into it with with the woods behind a white crib is that is that a scenario that you've seen often where it's a lot of white crips or white bloods who run with well, the blacks I mean, and and the other I mean, races in accepting it? I mean, is it, nine times out of ten, wherever you at, this one gonna pull up. I mean, it's either gonna be a white crib or 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 a messing crib or a messing blood or or you know. <laughs> Or white blood <coughs> pull up, right? Because you know it's a fashion show nowadays. So it's either, and we only gonna go to war if if the wood or the mask is down. And if they, he got any type of hole, any weenie, any, and we ain't gonna do nothing. Niggas gonna throw him to the wolves. They might run. They may. They might even roll him up the yard. They sell. Right. So that's. I mean, like I say, we in the air now where it's really no backbone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everybody want to do drugs and you know be on the phone. Right, and 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 that's you know that's a, a segue into my next question. Actually, I was just gonna uh, get ready to ask you that you know because now they got they have a lot of um stories on YouTube uh, and they're called um current stories being told by a current prisoner or something like that, and they'll actually call from the prison phone. But but yeah. you're you're calling you calling from a cell phone, so uh. Let's elaborate some on, on that, if you don't mind. How much? How much? Um, how much is the price of a cell phone up in there right now? Well, the cell phone I'm on, a person offered me ten thousand dollars for. For a cell phone? I mean, they they wanted the cell phone. They needed the cell phone. They offered me ten thousand dollars. But you can get a brand new from about five. It depends on who you mess with. That's what it really depends on who you who who you with, who you run with, who you cool with. So why why didn't you sell it? Because I needed it, I needed more than I needed that money. Right, right. So so because that cell phone is your avenue basically to the streets and and to handle a bunch of other things as far as maybe if you wanna if you wanna try to research a case legally or or whatever you wanna do. I mean, it, it helps you it helps you out. The things that you know that uh, with it helps you with anything that you wanna possibly wanna do. If you wanna hustle, you can do that. If you wanna set up a plan for when you come home. Or you want to set up your jobs, you want to get back to, you know, in, in with your, your family. You know, it, it sets up things for right. people that have been down a long time, that people don't write no more. You, you get back in, you know, communication with your loved ones. That's basically what it is. Right. And, and being in prison, you know, like you say, man, being able to communicate with your loved ones is uh is definitely extremely, extremely valuable when when um they're only giving. I'm going to put it, I'm going to phrase it up like this. You know, when I was in the shoe, I was back there. I was back there, majority of the, the shoe, a single man cell by myself. I wasn't getting no mail. So I started building a lot of hatred for people that, you know, I love. I, I, I used to build in my mind like, man, fuck them, man. I used to do this for them, and they ain't here for me. You feel what I'm saying? So right. When a motherfucker got their cell phone, a motherfucker started, you know, even if it's fake love, a motherfucker started giving that love. So a motherfucker started being accepted again. Becoming a bit more human ties again. Right. If I should say that. So basically, it helps you become, it helps animals become more human again. And I'm going to put it that way. Because a lot of people lose their mind, like, I don't give a fuck. And they just get to doing shit that don't matter. It, it, they don't nobody really want you around. And I became one of them dudes. Right. So, so. basically, you're saying that due to feeling. Um, the lack of love you felt from the streets or from the expectation that you had of people who were free on the streets when they didn't li live up to that expectation, it basically affected you in a negative way mentally. And so, and of course I can understand, you know, having all that time, you know, have, being, having life, feeling that, you know, the people that you care about don't care about you. A person can easily become depressed, become um, to the point where he just don't basically care, you know. And yeah, 
And so, so I'm, 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 I deal with my, my situation. I wasn't going to hurt myself. I wasn't going to kill myself, nothing like that. So I tried to take it out on anybody I could. Right. You know, I be, I'm a respectful person. So when every issue I got, I took it to the extreme. So right. That means if, if it was some bullshit, I might, I might want to stab you over some bullshit. But it was, you know, I'm building a reputation, and basically I'm dealing with my frustrations at the same time. Well, let me ask you this, um, because earlier you said that you was gang affiliated, and how did um, how did your homies from your gang uh uh, did they look out for you? Did they, you know, because um, if you're in there behind a gang related crime, of course it was it was for the gang. So are are your homies living up to your expectations, or how how does that situation work? I mean, I mean, it's go for anybody. It's a lot of people. That some people gonna look out, but the majority of the people that's gonna look out is gonna be your loved ones, your family, your uncle, your auntie, your mamas, your homies ain't gonna be here. Right. It's only a it's only a couple motherfucking homies that's gonna stay solid and send you something. Right. That's just being real. And, and if you think that everybody and their mama gonna send you something, you're gonna lose your mind. Right. And then of course, like you say, the homies that do send you things for whatever reason, they can't afford to do it every month. Exactly. And so it's just a lot of motherfuckers that's gonna tell you, yeah, I'm gonna do it, and then a lot of motherfuckers ain't gonna do it. Right, right. So let me ask you this, man. Um, if you had it all, if you had to do it all over again, would, would you still join the gang, knowing what you know now? Honestly, uh, hell no. I live a life. Right. I would live my life. See, I'm a person that ain't really never had a chance. So hell yeah, I would. If I knew what I know now, I would turn around and do something positive with my life. That's the honest truth. When when you say when you say you a person that ain't never really had a chance, what do you mean by that? Now, my mom, you know, was basically like a homegirl. She was on the block, so I was on the block with her. So, so at four or five years old, I was smoking, drinking uh, beer, all that on the porch. At four or five so years I, old, you were smoking and drinking beer. Yeah, smoking weed, drinking beer. Where was See, I'm going up crib in eighty five. Where, where was you getting the weed and the beer from? From the older homies that, you know, ran with my mom and them. Hmm. It was funny to them back in the days. You know, that was cool. Right, to see a I little... I never really had no normal childhood. Okay. So, at what age do you think you officially hopped off the porch and was basically just, like, in the hood? By, like, 91, 92. So, how old, by how old were you? By 12. So, at, at, at 12 years old, you kind of just running the street, just... Hanging with the older homies, just just being a. Uh, I mean, look, I, I remember an incident in '88 where I took a gun from one of the homies, one of the older homies. I'm gonna say his name, Early Black. He ended up catching a murder with that same gun. Well, I ended up stealing that gun from him, and I took it to some other homies, and I'm teaching them how to shoot. Hmm. So this is this is what you know. This is how I grew up. Right. Right. You know. So. So, so you grew up, you grew up basically where being a gangster, being in the streets and things that that's associated with those two things is cool. So basically you, you saw nothing wrong with what I was doing. Right. And of course, you know, when we in the street and we, and we gang banging and we being gangsters, we want the attention. We want to be accepted. And, and a lot of times that acceptance comes through violence, through acts of um, what people would consider crazy, you know. And so it, that's the type of thing that, that we do, and eventually we see nothing wrong. Because, you know, every yeah. time we do something crazy, we get, we get commended. We get pats on the back. And, of course, we look up and our life can spiral out of control. Exactly. Exactly. Like I say, I never had a role model. I never uh, thought about Michael Jordan or nothing. My, my role model, shit, by 94, was either facing death row or facing life in prison. Right. All my role models. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. All the ones that I consider big homies, that I consider real gangsters. So right. These are the dudes that I respected and looked up to. So, of course, I mean, it's only right that I can, a couple of years later, I end up catching America and going the same route they did. And that was going to be my next question. Um, now, you said that your role models was either on death row, facing life without facing life. That didn't deter you. That didn't make you see it uh, by seeing the people that you looked up to, seeing the situation that they was in. It didn't deter you from wanting to take that same route. What what made you continue to want to be in the streets? Because I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be a gangster. Right. Wow.
Yeah, that's deep, and man. That's just the honest truth. Right, that's deep. No, and I appreciate I appreciate your honesty because it's like that with a lot of us, you know. And by us, especially by us being younger, by us being immature, um, we don't we don't appreciate the circumstances that are in front of us in terms of when we see an older homie go to jail, you know. Because in a lot of our communities, going to jail is seen as a badge of honor, you know. Especially when somebody would go to jail and they come home three or four years later with muscles and and all this type of stuff. People, you know, people congratulate them and this and that, but they don't come home and talk about how they was left for dead while they was in there. And so sometimes yeah. we we'll see this stuff and we we'll think it's cool. You know, sixteen of life. I, 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 I. I, I sit back in these cells and I think I done stayed on the level four yard for 19 years and I ain't even motherfucking been on the streets 19 years. Wow. Hey, that, you know what? That's crazy now that you mentioned it right because you said you went to jail at 18. No. I mean, let, let, let me back it up. I went to jail. My first started doing jail time in 94. Uh -huh. From 94 to now, I've only been out 22 months. Okay. And the months that I was out, besides eight months, I was on the run. I had a wall from camp. I had a wall from placement. Hmm. I went to YA in '96. I got out in 2000. I was only out a couple months before I called my murder. Okay. And I fell down. So basically, I've been incarcerated all my life. Wow. And then during you said during your entire incarceration, this period here, you've never. You've never went to a level three. You just had to deal with level fours. Level four. I've been on level four the whole time. This is my first chance, even possibly even close to getting to a level three this year. Mm -hmm. Well, man, and you know. Like I say, prison done changed so much. They done made up certain rules for people that came to prison while they was young and caught all the time, all the, all the new points. Right. Now they gave us a way out. They let us, you know, if we can program for a certain amount of time, they'll override you to a level three so you can get rehabilitation, real, real, real rehabilitation. Right. So where, where, where is your mind state at now mentally? Are you going to try to take advantage of those rehabilitation uh, type classes and programs or? Oh, see, that, I've been taking advantage of the uh, self-help programs. You know, I do self-help in my cell. Okay. You know, I do self-help, you know, I read. I never just, you know, do nothing. As I should say, right. I work out. I try to stay in a positive mind frame now. Right. But what before, I was always looking for something to do. Okay. I, was push, I was pushing the line. I didn't give a fuck where you was from. Gangster, company court. If it was an issue and I found out about it, I'm going to have something to say about it. Right. That's just how I was. I mean, I can tell you by the incident where, you know, the niggas damn near turned on me. But I was in the right, so they didn't turn on me. Uh -huh. The essay told me that I was paid on some of my money. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just in my mind frame. Well, I'm from a um, I'm from an area where, or, you know, we never deep on the yard, so we always tend to get pushed on. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the ones that was like, "Fuck that, nigga!" I'm pushing on everybody else. If they got something wrong, nigga, I'm bringing it up. Right. And if it's a problem, nigga, we going to the hole. Right. That's just what it is. Right. But that was more of myself dealing with my frustration. As I should say, that was my time where I was being on, on, on I was suicidal, as I should say. I wasn't trying to kill myself, but I wasn't, I wasn't triggered by what where, where the consequences would happen to me if I do something. Right, right. Wow, man. So, you know, um, I can say it's been extremely interesting talking to you, man. And I definitely believe that uh, once we put this up, they'll definitely want to have you on here again, man. You know, uh I definitely don't want to hold you too long. I know you know your security is extremely important, and I definitely want you to stay stay safe in there as far as your you know your connection with uh with everything that you're trying to do in life, man. And so, uh, G Dub, I definitely appreciate having you on here, man. And um, it was a pleasure, man. It was a pleasure. You know, I would I would love for the, you know the youth to really understand what prison really about. Right. I don't want to give no false hopes, you know, because I was raised on false hopes. I was raised with with a bunch of motherfuckers that I thought was real. But in the end, wasn't really real. Right. So I want to, you know, I want to, you, I really want to get to people before you fuck up your life and you come back here and you can't get out. Right. Right. That's what I really want to do. That was my whole intent. You know, I'm okay. I done did all this stuff, but shit, I ain't did nothing really. And if I can get back to the community or stop a youngster for, you know, going down my shoes because he want to be a gangster, that, that's what that's the whole thing about. That's the whole reason why I'm doing this. I don't really be doing the talking to interviews and stuff.
Well, that's deep, man. And like I say, I hope, I definitely hope, man. Uh, you know, I got, I got um a decent amount of subscribers, man. And, and I do on Friday what's called a free game Friday, and um I, I get I get a lot of good reports back on individuals, man, youngsters who are out there in the street who say that um you know the information that that's provided to them definitely make, helps them make better decisions and de and definitely helps some of them even get out of the street. And so I definitely believe some of the things you said, man, will um. Will, will, you know, will make some of these youngsters think, man, about, you know, throwing their whole life away. So, so real quick. Now you say you came to jail at, 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 uh, 18 or 20 or somewhere up in there. So, so just doing the math real quick. So you're either about 40 or 38, somewhere up in there, right? Now I'm 41. You I turned 42 in January. Okay. So basically then you didn't, you didn't spend all your twenties in prison. You didn't spend all your thirties in, pr in prison. Yeah. Now you, you and you're still in prison, jumping into your forties. How do you feel, man? Real quick about just losing your youth, you know, to prison. I feel sad. You know, I got sisters and brothers that I haven't heard told other motherfuckers like we don't know him mm -hmm. because I've been incarcerated all my life. That shit hurt. You know, I don't lost my grandma. I don't lost my mama. Man, my my, my condolences, homie. My condolences. I know yeah. that's that's got to be horrible. Right. So, you know, and then you got this COVID shit, you know, I'm in my back of my mind and I'm going to get out. And is, is anybody going to be there that I know when I do get out? Right. So, you know, hell yeah, this shit hurt. And that's deep, man. That's, you know, that's a whole, um, a whole lot to think about. But unfortunately, many of us don't think about it until we're in, we're incarcerated. Now, everything that wasn't important to us is important to us because we, 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 we have time to now to sit down and put things into perspective, man. And so, uh, you know, that's that's deep, man. We don't realize how much we um, we're hurting the people that we love and, and we're being taken away from the people that we love. You know, and, and, and we make the hood seem so important while we out there. But then once we get we get locked up and we have a time to sit back and think and educate ourselves some, we realize that the hood is definitely not what it was cracked up to be. And that's the truth. Yeah, I mean, man. That's the truth. But if you ask me right now, if somebody this that same hood, I'm going to do something to them. Right. It's crazy, but shit, you done build a reputation, you can't just lose it like that. And you know what? I mean, I used, I used to feel the same way, right? And I think as I look deeper into it, it got to a point to where... We wasn't really, we're really not riding for the hood no more. We're riding for ourselves because if a person diss your hood, that's something personal. You know, when you diss a person's hood, you're basically inviting him into a fight. That's what, you know, that's what you want him to do. You want him to get mad enough to fight. And I think that's the reason why, you know, uh, we take a lot of that stuff personal, you know, because some of us will let somebody else say, fuck you, you know, to us. And we'll say, fuck you, you know, we'll say it back. But if, if they diss your hood, you know, being from... You know, being from uh, the gang culture, that's basically now, now, you know, you, you, this dude, and basically, you know, he didn't throw his knife in the sand, man. He, and, 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 and now you got to get out. You know what I'm saying? Cause, you know, if, if, if you don't get down, now you just, you know, your reputation is basically over. So, you know, it, it's, it's a trip how I used to evaluate some of that stuff, man, that basically we cared more about our hood where we didn't own, many of us didn't own one piece of property. You know, a person could say something crazy to us, but if he diss our hood, you know, just due to the way the gang mentality is set up, man, that, you know, that was an automatic, it was automatic go time, man. So, you know, um, it's just crazy how, how we, you know, we put ourselves in so deep in a hole, man, mentally. And, you know, we do a lot of things that's backwards. And, you know, I, you know, these last little couple of years, man, these last like four years, this has been the hardest time that I ever done. And the reason why is because I had to control myself. I, you know, I had to stop doing what I normally do. Right. Just react. You know, I had to sit back and let things go. What's more important? You going home or you going to this level three? What's more important? Are you staying up here acting a fool? So I had to grow up. So right. these last little four years, they've been the hardest. Because up until then, my time was flying. Right. And I and I definitely I definitely uh commend you on that. And you're right, man. I noticed the same thing that, you know, uh <clears throat> When I was trying to uh, make parole and go home now, because you know what it is, we starting to think about things more. You know, we starting to use our mind as opposed to using our fists and using weapons. And so it's tougher, you know, dealing with the mind when we have to balance our thoughts, you know, when when when, when we could just react and wild out and move off pure emotions. That was easy. But 
having to think and navigate our way through situations, man, and, you know, and sidestep, sidestep individuals and, and watch out for things that could potentially, um, things that could potentially set us back. Is 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 difficult, you know. It's more difficult than than having to fight, having to go ride and get your ride on, you know what I'm saying? And so, like I say, man, once again, I commend you, homie, for thinking, you know, for using your mind, man. And basically, what you're doing is called maturing, man. That's all you're doing, man. You're maturing, you know. And I want to I want to commend you on that, man, because I know, you know, it, it's not easy, you know, being in there in your position. It's not easy at all, man. As you know, any day you can go out and potentially get into a wreck. So, you know, being able to watch out for the, you know, watch out and move, move a different way uh, in order to chase your freedom, man, is commendable. And I've been through the struggle and I uh, honestly and sincerely pray for you, man, and hope that you eventually you'll be able to regain your freedom, man. Man, I appreciate it, man. You know, with it, you know, laying above is willing. I'm going to make it there. Most, you know, I'm trying hard, you know, that's the only thing I can do, stand tall through it all. Most definitely, man. And uh, so, hey, y'all, that's that concludes my interview, man. Uh, maybe we'll hook back up in the future, G-Dub. I appreciate you swinging through, man. You you uh, you uh really shine some knowledge on a lot of things, man. And uh, y'all already know what time it is, man. Resume normal program. Dear God, please don't let me relapse and return to the evil that men do. Father God, I pray and ask that you help me to have mercy on others the same way I would.